So, you know, it, there's a time when God punishes you, but, but there's all, always God's final answer is that we come to see our sins and we repent. And that's what happened. Uh, but it wasn't, their request was, can you get rid of those snakes? And, and isn't that what I ask God? Said, get rid. And, and God says, no, I'll help. Uh, what I want you to do, Moses, is, and and uh, I, I think, um, Mary Beth, your translation said said bronze, right? But whatever that is, brazen, whatever, it was shiny, okay? Bronze, brazen, bra uh, brass, whatever, it was it was nice, it, it, and it shone, and, and it drew attention to it. And, and so that's what Moses made, a snake twined around a pole. And whenever the people were bitten, they'd look at that snake and they were healed. And that's a miraculous way that God helped them. I'll come back to that in just a little bit. But that's what God did to help them. Now, our scripture ends there, and, and I did just a little bit more work. Some of you might be aware of this. I, I, it's not a, a most familiar thing, so I had to refresh myself with that. You'd think that that snake fulfilled its purpose and it would disappear from history and that's it. But no, not with God's people. They're not only complainers, but they're idolaters. And so in the book of 2 Kings chapter 18, verse 4, under the reign of Hezekiah, who was a reforming king, Hezekiah found these snakes. They were called the Nehushtan. But, well, it's a funny name. It's kind of a pejorative name, I guess. But the reason why they called them that is the people were worshiping them. Hard to believe. But that's what had happened to the snake on the pole. And so Hezekiah got rid of it. We can't have that around. So that's with the snakes. That's the story. Dear ones, I, I, I have spent so much time in, in, in praying how to modernize that uh, for today. And, and the first thing is that I want to share with you, if any of you have a medical background, you know better than I with what I want to share with you right now. The, the snake has its counterpart in the healing professions today. Uh, one thought that comes to mind is the caduceus, if you're aware of that. However, that's the two snakes on the pole. And, and some, I guess, in the military have adopted that uh, for the medics. But the, the medical profession, it's the one snake on the pole, just just to be accurate on that, okay? But I find it interesting that the medical people would use a reference to the Bible. Nobody would ever say that. But where do you get that from? Other than snake oil, <laughs> right? The medics would wear a bunch of snake oil peddlers. Well, why is a snake? Well, it, it, it puts in together not only physical, but mental and spiritual well-being, right? I mean, the snake around the pole, it, it's more than just, just medicine. And, and I, I want to just share that with you to make you think. You know, as we go through life, we go back to, to that, that whole thought again of, uh, of the snake and the healing and, and what causes that. Uh, we are creatures of body, soul, and spirit. And I'll never fully understand how those relate to one another. But if you don't think they do, then you are not paying attention. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. The body affects the mind. The mind affects the body. The spirit affects everything. And so when you talk about healing, God can use anything. And do not disparage anything. Garrison Keeler. Uh, I, I should just say, Garrison Keeler, my, my little memory of him is PC. It's not politically correct. That's prior to being canceled. Because uh, he's got into trouble somewhere, and, and he's gone. You know? But I remember him. Do any of you remember the little town yeah. in Minnesota? Yeah. Lake Wobegon? Yes. Okay. Well, well I, I, this is from my memory. And, and so if you want to Google it, you have to... Google, the keywords would be a doctor traveling from Fort Francis to Chicago. Okay? And in Lake Wobegon, they were concerned about their revenue and, and how things were going financially. And so they decided that they would set up a speed trap. It was only two blocks, but they'd have a, a speed trap. And they would monitor it for six months and see how they were doing. 
And so the deputy was in this speed trap, and one day this guy is traveling 100 miles an hour through town. And, and uh, so the deputy got to stop him. So he puts on his lights and stops him. And, and as he stop it, stops him, uh, the guy says, you know, he says, I'm an I'm a MD, I'm a doctor. I'm traveling from Fort Francis to Chicago. And I wasn't paying attention because I need to get there so quickly. He says, it's an urgent mission that I'm on. I've got a new miracle medicine that I need to bring to the pharmacy down in Chicago. Uh, in fact, I have some in the trunk. And uh, he says, you know, if you would, officer, just give me a warning so I could be on my way, I would sure appreciate it because I'm on a, a definite timeline. He says, in fact, uh, you know, I'd be so appreciative, I'll, I'll give you four of the, four of the bottles. Yeah, and, and the deputy, he's, he's mesmerized by all this. So he's, sure, so, so he lets him go with a warning and, and make sure next time he slows down. So after six months, as Garrison tells the story, they, they have a council meeting and, and they go through how things are going. And so the deputy gives his report, you know, all the arrests, all the speeding tickets, the amount of money and so on. And, and there it's, it's obvious, there's one stop for somebody going excessively and, and there's no fine, there's no ticket. And so they ask him what's going on. And he's, well, and he's kind of proud of himself, of himself, the deputy. You know, he says, well, what happened was is this doctor was on his way from Fort Francis to Chicago and, and I stopped him by mistake. I shouldn't have done that because he was on a mission with a miracle of medicine and, and uh, he needed to be there in a certain amount of time. So I gave him a warning and, and he let me go and, and he gave me some bottles of his medical medicine. And, and the rest of the council said, you're so gullible. He says, that, that, that guy's a quack, and we're sure. And, and don't ever do that again. You know, we, we need the revenue and, and that guy suckered you. And, and Garrison says, well, okay, that, that's the way life goes. You make a mistake. He says, only, he says, the deputy couldn't tell anybody because his wife had been having some health issues, some personal health issues, and the sheriff's wife had had arthritis for years. And the deputy, by mistake, gave them both a bottle of this miracle medicine, and both of them have never felt better in their lives. <laughs> Think about it, it's, it's kind, of, kind of a cute story. And, and what it says is it makes fun of it, if you go through life and you think that only your body reacts to things, your mind sometimes can do it too, even the spirit, right? So that's the best I can share with you on that story. So how God uses different things in our lives to bring us healing, spiritually as well as physically. What we need to watch, just going full circle with that story of the snake, is in our lives we can make anything an idol we are creatures like the israelites we can be idolaters so quickly uh, communion is is our healing medicine from the lord for our body soul and spirits isn't it whenever we can take the lord's supper it's for our healing and and yet i want to share with you this is is in the history of communion there have been times where we've made it uh, an idol. How could we do that? Well, the, uh, you know this. It, it might be a part of you or not, so I'm sharing something with you. It, there are three traditions with regards to communion. Uh, the Reformed, uh, totally different than us, you know, in, in that uh, the real presence of Jesus is not a part of the Reformed thinking. It begins with confession, even, on that. Uh, the pastor uh, is not the confessing person uh, as it is for us in, in the Catholic Church. Uh, in, so the, the whole thing. And when it comes uh, to, to the real presence and sharing communion with each other, uh, the Reformed uh, is so different than the Catholic Church, right? Uh, the Catholic Church, it turns in to the body of Christ. And Lutherans, we're kind of in the middle on all these things. So in our Bible class, we can share a little bit more about that. But right now, that's the thought. So in the Middle Ages, the, the Reformed weren't so bothered by this, but the Catholic Church was. And and both are important. J just uh, in terms of backgrounds on this, you know, the Bible is more the emphasis of the Reformed Church. 
the sacraments are the emphasis of the Catholic and the Lutheran Church. And a little quote, just to tease you on that, Martin Luther said, you know, I'd rather have the body of Christ with the Pope than a good Bible study with Zwingli. <laughs> so think about that. Okay, if push comes to shove, that's where Luther was at. But okay, back to the sacraments. Okay, in the Middle Ages, the people were so superstitious. It was the age of superstition. And so the priest, the pastor, would give the congregants the, the body of Christ and you put it in your hand. Right? If you're used to that, that's how they would do it. And, and as they would visit with one another, uh, they'd go on the farms, and, and here they would notice the, the hosts, the little wafers, were nailed in the posts of the barn. And, and what's going on here? Well, the, the people, if it was so sacred, why not put it in the barn so the cows would give good milk? <laughs> so to think of that. So the priests and the pastors... <laughs> I don't know that they huddled, but they got together. It's almost like taking your medicine. It is Then it became a time where we feed you. And you don't leave until it's gone. <laughs> okay? And, and so how we turn something that's so good into an idol. And, and through the years, uh, I bet you that we're not aware of where that comes from. But there are those of us that are handlers and those of us that are feeders. Right? And, and sometimes we get upset about that. Uh, but that's the background on it, and it really is an issue of idolatry. And, and dear ones, that's where I want to take you back to Jesus. It is see whatever snakes are around in your life right now. Think whatever's biting you. What's making life miserable? Whatever those things are. And, and how God helps you with them. Okay, He uses usually things that we can touch. Communion, other people. Don't make them your idol. Don't focus on them. See, why God does that is to point us always to, you say it, to Jesus. And I don't care if you're helped by those things or not, if you begin to focus on them, you've missed the whole purpose, right? So the rest of the day, just ask God to show you Jesus' love. In the midst of all your complaints and troubles and so on, don't focus on that. Put your eyes, as the hymn says, on Jesus. And you'll not only be saved, but you'll be blessed and filled with joy. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. We have our prayers.